Отлично. If we could have council members please come to the dais so we can start. Thank you. I'd like to call to order the council meeting for September 30th. If the clerk could please read the roll. Councilmember Dunbar. Councilmember Garza. Councilmember Hussein. Councilmember Jackson. Councilmember Spadafore. Councilmember Spitzley. Councilmember Washington. Councilmember Wood. Here. There are eight members present, a quorum. Um, at this time, if we could uh, rise for uh, meditation and Pledge of Allegiance, if we could remember uh, Dale Benjamin. He's in the hospital and quite ill at this time, and so if we could remember him. Councilmember Jackson. Would also like to remember Brian Jeffrey Davis, who passed away on the 20th. He was 35, he's from Lansing, went to Sexton, great guy, very humble, worked out in Chicago, and uh, he'll be missed. Thank you. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag. You have for your approval the printed council proceedings of September 23rd. Vice President Spadafore. Madam President, I move the approval of the printed council proceedings for September 23rd, 2019. We have a motion. Are there any questions or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes. We are to special ceremonies. We have a tribute in recognition of the Lansing branch of the NAACP 100 year anniversary and 54th annual Freedom Fund dinner. Thank you. If we could have those that are present here uh, come down to the well. I see uh, we have the president of the NAACP here and a number of the uh, people that are um, on the board and Patricia has the resolution. All of you can circle around her. Yes. and thanks for here. So we have a resolution um, states where the Lansing branch of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, NC NAACP, is celebrating 100 years and has announced its 54th annual Freedom Fund Dinner with a theme of lifting every voice to be held Sunday, October 6, 2019. And whereas in 1919, the Lansing branch of the NAACP was chartered, under the leadership of Mr. C.A. Campbell, who fought diligently to support civil rights for the community, and for over 100 years, the NAACP has led the movement on social rights and equality. Um, because this is 100 years, I'm reading it all. Whereas the NAACP <laughs> works for local, state, and national levels to ensure political, educational, social, and economic equality for all citizens and to eliminate and remove all barriers of racial discrimination, and whereas the 2019 keynote speaker is Reverend Dr. Wendell Anthony, president of the Detroit branch NAACP and member of the NAACP National Board of Directors, who will bring a timely message on equality, 
civil rights, social justice, and the fight for freedom. And whereas the NAACP 54th Annual Freedom Fund Dinner offers an opportunity for the community to come together in support of the NAACP Lansing Branch and share a celebration, the effort put forth through the Lansing Branch has made vast strides in integrating the Lansing community. Be it resolved that the Lansing City Council hereby acknowledges the Lansing Branch of the N National Association for the Advancement of Colored People on its 100th year anniversary and the 54th Annual Freedom Fund Dinner and express our admiration and gratitude to its members for their achievements and commitment to the City of Lansing and its residents. We applaud the NAACP Lansing Branch for many years of success and diligence in the fight for equality and anticipate many more to come. And I'll move the resolution and then I'll have you know, the president say a few words. And with that, I move the resolution. The motion have, has been made by Council Member Spitzley. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries unanimously. I'm just here as a member. <laughs> um, no, I want to, I do, I, I get to be mayor also. Um, I do want to congratulate the NAACP. Um, 100 years, it's, uh, it's, it's an achievement. Um, and every year the, the event is wonderful, so I'm looking forward to it this Sunday at four. Um, four, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. Um, I, was, I went before I was elected, I went as an elected, and I'm proud to go as mayor. Um, so really, uh, I'm looking forward to, to everything, and I wanna congratulate everyone behind me, but everybody else, all the members of the NAACP here in Lansing, and, and really anywhere else. It's a great achievement and, and um, well-deserved. Well, uh, we appreciate the uh, city council and the mayor's office for giving us this tribute. It is our 100th year, and we're hoping the institution will carry on for another 100 years. Uh, we um, have done a number of things and coordinated with the city on a number of projects. Uh, we feel real good of the chief that came out just recently as Chief uh, Yankowski and the achievements that he's had with diversity on the police force. Uh, we look forward to the good works of Chief uh, Green, <laughs> we're on a number of committees together, I keep getting the name, but anyway, uh, we're looking forward to uh, his success and continued success throughout the department. Uh, on behalf of the branch, uh, we, we all extend our thanks, uh, and particularly I wanna make known before the dinner, and then even at the dinner, that the Freedom Fund Committee has done some great work to uh, put together a good program that we hope that you can come and enjoy and see. We still have a few tickets available. Uh, we need to know tonight, though, if you are interested so we can uh, get our count in. And I also want to say, too, uh, our UAW friends that are out on the striking, uh, we, we have a great relationship with UAW. They've been strong supporters of the NAACP, and uh, we're supporting you on your efforts, and hopefully you can get that uh, resolution to get very, everybody back to work. And, and it'll be something that you can be proud of. But again, thank you on behalf of the NAACP. Anyone? Our next special ceremony is a tribute in support of the United Auto Worker Union members on strike at General Motors. If we could have the members of the UAW that are here, please come forward. <clears throat> Just wanna add for our last, um, our, our first recognition, um, I'm a proud silver lifetime member of the NAACP, so I encourage my colleagues if you're not members to, to become um, members. So with that, I have the proud UAW here uh, this evening. Um, we have a resolution and do you have it? I do have it. Thank you. And I'd like to Resolved by the City Council of the City of Lansing. 
Whereas Lansing has a long history with General Motors forming partnerships to benefit the Lansing economy and many workers involved with the plants as well as the businesses that benefit off of the needs of GM and their employees. And whereas on Sunday, September 15th, 2019 at 12 o'clock AM, the United Auto Workers went out on strike because they were unable to reach an agreement with GM. And whereas the auto workers are calling on the big three auto makers to recognize the contributions and sacrifices that the UAW members have made to create a healthy and profitable company. And whereas UAW Vice President Terry Diddies stated, we stood up for General Motors when they needed us most. Now we are standing together in unity and solidarity for our members, their families, and the communities where we work and live. And whereas UAW membership is striking to secure fair wages, affordable health care, share of profits, job security, and a defined path to permanent seniority for temps. Whereas the city of Lansing understands the economic impact this strike has on not only our city, but the region as well as the many individuals that are impacted by it. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Lansing City Council supports the men and women employed by or affected by the strike and urges GM to resolve this strike as soon as possible by honoring the dignity of those who have helped make GM pros prosperous over the years. Be it further resolved that the Lansing City Council encourages our fellow elected officials to stand in solidarity with working families in our communities. Resolution's been moved by President Wood. Is there any discussion? Uh, Council Member Washington. Just very quickly, I just want to say personally how much I admire the UAW. This sacrifice is not easy. You made this vote, you went on strike, knowing it would affect you and your families. And in this day and age, when people really don't know how to sacrifice, you stood up, you did it, I'm proud of you. We stand with you, and what you fight for in your organized labor organization affects all of us because what you get, typically, we get afterwards. So thank you for everything you do in your organization, and thank you for the sacrifice. And then Mayor, oh, do you want to? Oh, sorry. Council Member Spitzley. While the mayor's walking up there, I'll just make a quick comment. Um, I, we do, um, I, I also support you as, as the daughter of a, of a retired Teamster who is also uh, a union steward. Um, I remember strike times as well. And you know, and my dad would always talk about the sacrifices you have to make. Um, but we all, you know, as you look at the end results of those strikes, it was, you know, uh, to be able to take care of his family, take care of us, provide up for us so that we could better ourselves. And so um, I, I support you. We support what you're doing, and um, we thank you for your sacrifice. Okay. All those in favor, please say. Listen, you all gave me this gavel. <laughs> all those in favor, please say aye. aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Mayor. Well, again, I appreciate the opportunity to speak. Um, uh, these are all very good friends. Uh, I've been on the phone a handful of times already with uh, with both of our presidents here. Um, and uh, I tell you what, for anybody watching, if you haven't had a chance to go out and just stop, pull over on the side of the road and go say hi to some of the folks who are standing at the, at the doorways of one of our plants, I hope you will. Um, I went, no publicity, no fanfare, I just went and stopped and went over and said hi and thanked them all for being there, told them all that, that we all want what they want, which is to get back on the job and to, to make a fair wage. And, um, and they were in good spirits. Uh, and I know it can be hard because it rains, but they're out there um, supporting their leadership. And, and it's important. Um, we you know, we, we want to continue to work with our, our friends in the UAW. Um, both these gentlemen and I are, are on, a, uh, on the United Way board, which just agreed to, to allow for some money for those who, who are in need. You know, we know that there are folks who are UAW, UAW members who need city services now that perhaps they haven't in the past, and, and we are uh, open and, and ready for that. Um, so the city will continue to, to stand with our residents and our, our UAW members who are gonna need us more now 
until this is settled. So thank you for being here. Thank you for all you're doing for, for your members, um, our constituents, and, um, and keep, up the, keep up the fight. Yeah, I'm Randy Freeman, Local 652 President, and with me is Bill Reed, 602 President, and with me is 1753 President, Yvonne Denson. So all three of the presidents of General Motors sites are in here today, and we all take this very, very, we're very proud. What I would like to say just <coughs> real quick is, Mayor, thank you, City Council, thank you. Lansing, thank you. You put your arms around us, you've embraced us, you've taken us in like I've never seen before from the labor unions out there to the businesses out there that are walking on the floors with us, walking the streets with us, making sure our needs are met. It, yeah, I've never seen anything like it. And I just want you to know I am so happy to be part of this in Lansing. We'll get back to work real soon. We know the effect it's having on more than just the UAW members, the community itself. There's a lot of IPSs and other businesses in Lansing that are affected by it. As soon as we can get back, we will. But thank you and thank you. to comments by council members and the city clerk. Council member comments, council member Jackson. Thank you, I just wanna thank everybody that came out to our fourth ward constituent contact meeting every fourth Saturday. I also wanna make everybody aware of an event. I don't know if it's good for event time, but um, Sexton High School homecoming parade is this Friday, October 4th, starting six o'clock at Sexton, the West Side Neighborhood Organization Association um, Riddle Elementary School, PAMS, Preschool Dancers, LA, LPD, Captain, excuse me, Chief Green will be there. There may be food there, but it's a parade through the neighborhood to support Sexton and it starts at the school, goes through the neighborhood and ends um, at the stadium where the game is. So anybody that can come on out and support our local school district and our Sexton Big Reds, please do. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Washington, um, then Councilmember Spitzley, and Councilmember Hussein. Thank you, Madam President. I just want to remind everybody that we will be having our first ward um, constituent gathering this Saturday. It will be hosted by Councilwoman at Large, Patricia Spitzley. She will have Chief Mackey from our new um, fire department chief there, along with Judy Keeler our new controller, and um, she's amazing. They're both amazing. You'll be able to get a lot of really good information. You'll be able to get a new perspective from having it um, uh, hosted by a different council person. It begins at 10 a.m. and it goes until noon. It is at the Board of Water and Light Depot in Rio Town. That's just north of Mount Hope Avenue on South Washington. If you can't get there at 10, come anyway. If you must leave before noon, come anyway and bring your children if you need to. They are welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Council Member Spitzley, then Council Member Hussein, and Council Member Garza. Thank you, Madam President. Um, and I appreciate being able to host um, Council Member Washington's uh, first Saturday contact. You know, really, I think that if you haven't attended one of the ward uh, meetings, you're really missing out. Um, it's a great um, opportunity for one-on-one um, -on -one contact with your with your ward council person. Um, it beats having to track them down in Myers and, and corner them in the frozen food section. They're right there, um, and it, you know they usually have um, you know great people there. Um, in addition to having Chief Mackey there and um, Treasurer Keeler, um, hopefully we'll be giving updates on on issues that are happening tonight. Um, and as well as bringing any city issues um, forward that um, the residents have. And so um, I, I'm, I'm again proud to be able to host it and encourage everybody to attend. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Hussein and Council Member uh, Garza. I wanted to announce our next constituent contact meeting that will take place for the third ward 
uh, on October 12th, which is 10 to 12 noon at the Alfreda Schmidt Southside Community Center. Uh, that is at 5825 Wise Road. Uh, being that it is a ward um, constituent meeting, we certainly focus on Southwest Lansing issues, but everybody is welcome. We do touch on uh, issues that impact the broader community. We do talk about issues that are before the city council, issues that are forthcoming. Uh, so we certainly um, uh, invite you, we welcome you, uh, regardless of, of whether or not you live in the third ward. Um, I also wanted to, in, you know, we had a pretty lengthy agenda um, at our last city council meeting, and so I didn't want to take up too much time during uh, council announcements to discuss the Lansing Harmony celebration, but I certainly do uh, want to um, talk just briefly uh, we had a fantastic event uh, on September 14th at Ben Davis Park in Southwest Lansing. It was aimed at uh, really celebrating the region's diversity uh, through music, art, and through food. Um, and you know, last year was was good, and this year was was great. The weather was great. I here we have Andy Shore to thank uh, for that. I guess he pulled some strings with the weather guys. And, um, but in any event, it was truly a fantastic event. Um, I want to thank all of the volunteers. We had a number of volunteers that volunteered uh, over the course of uh, the day, uh, kind of across a number of volunteer shifts. Um, I want to thank the participants. Um, I want to thank our sponsors. It was incredibly important for us uh, that people, regardless of uh, their financial positioning, that they could come out, engage in the community. You know, th th again, the, the aim was uh, to advance social cohesion. Uh, the aim was uh, to really create a shared sense of belonging and space. Uh, and without our volunteers, we would not have been able to offer this event free of charge uh, to individuals from all across our community. So we really want to thank our sponsors. Um, and then I have to give a special thanks to the steering committee. This group of fantastic volunteers uh, spent hundreds and hundreds of hours this year um, organizing and fundraising and, and, and navigating processes that I never even knew went into uh, organizing a festival. And so I really want to thank those individuals as well. I uh, look forward to uh, next year. Um, the, the event, uh, hopefully, uh, will be something that we host in Southwest Lansing in perpetuity. Thanks so much. Thank you, Council Member Garza. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, everybody, for being here this evening. I just want to give you an update. My second ward constituent contact meeting, the second Saturday in the second ward, will be October 12th from 1 to 3 p.m. at 1435 East Miller Road. That's the fire station 44 in between Pennsylvania and Aurelius Road. I look forward to seeing as many people out there as possible. We can talk about anything city related, uh, focuses on the southeast quadrant of Lansing, which is the second ward. Also, I got a, a community cleanup update I want to share with you from the South Lansing Business Association. It's the fourth Southeast Lansing team up to clean up. That will be hosted uh, Wednesday, October 23rd from 1.30 to 4 p.m. They will meet at St. Michael's Episcopal Church, 6500 Amwood Drive between Menards and Target. So anybody looking to beautify the Southeast quadrant of Lansing, please show up. Kids are welcome as long as they're with their parents. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other council member comments? Seeing none, turn it back over to the clerk. Uh, thank you, President Wood. I just want to mention that we mailed out uh, about 10,000 absentee ballots uh, on Friday and a few hundred more today. Uh, but there is still plenty of time to apply for and get your absentee ballot. Um, I do want to let folks know that um, we have, uh, we are piloting um, in cooperation with the Secretary of State uh, some revised uh, ballot envelopes for sending them out and receiving the absentee ballots back. Uh, and about two thirds of the city have the old ones that you've seen before that are kind of a brown envelope. Uh, and about one third of the city has a new envelope. Uh, when it comes to you, it'll look like this. So it's got the um, blue on one side and a white envelope, a cleaner look uh, that the post office uh, is uh, more able to handle uh, the white envelope rather than the brown envelope. And then the return envelope uh, looks like this. So it's green and white and the color coding uh, is designed to help the post office know which direction the ballot is going, whether it's going to the voter or to the clerk. So um, please know that if you get Something that looks like this, it is not junk mail, it is your ballot for this November election. Um, <clears throat> and uh, also remember that if you, if you do vote by absentee ballot, whichever envelope you, you use, you are required to sign um, the envelope in order for us to be able to count your ballot. Um, again, there's plenty of time to keep requesting absentee ballots. We can uh, issue them uh, through the mail up until very close to the election although I do not recommend waiting that long. Uh, you can get them in person at our office up until four o'clock the day before the election. 
Uh, and if you register on election day, you can even get an absentee ballot in our office on election day. And uh, again, there's no registration deadline uh, under the constitutional amendment that passed last, uh, last year. Uh, so uh, you can register right up to in, and including on election day. And with that, we are to community event announcements. Is there anyone in the audience with a community event that you would like to tell us about? We'll give you one minute to tell us the details. We got through the annual walking tour at Mount Hope Cemetery, even in the rain. Uh, we had about 53 attend, which we thought was pretty good considering the circumstances. Now our attention uh, turns to the annual uh, 5K run walk, Race to Restore, to be held in Mount Hope Cemetery on Saturday, October 19th. The race begins at 10 a.m. and you can uh, access the sign up uh, for that through Facebook on our Facebook page, Friends of Lansing's Historic Cemeteries, or through runsignup.com or through the Playmakers site. And uh, the money raised from this is what we use the following year to do the restoration projects in the cemeteries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other community event announcements? All right. Uh, speaker registration for public comment on legislative matters. And that includes the public hearing as well as the items listed on the consent agenda and resolutions for action and the ordinance for passage. Um, and it's my understanding that um, the Liquor Control Commission objection uh, is pulled from the agenda tonight. Um, although since it's listed, you can still talk about it, but it will not be considered this evening is, is what I've been told. Um, so if you need to sign in, uh, please jump up right now before Nikki grabs the sheet, which she's about to do. And with that, we are to the mayor's comments. Mayor Shore. All right, thank you. Um, a few items of note from the last week. First, it's my understanding that uh, Bethlehem Lutheran once again held their fifth Sunday offering. For those who don't know, every fifth Sunday they hold an offering and all the money they receive goes to the Lansing Save accounts for our kids in, uh, in the Lansing School District uh, in the Baker neighborhood community. And I guess they raised about $1,650 for those kids, so that's excellent. Thank you to Bethlehem Lutheran, and we think there are gonna be a variety of other entities that are going to do that in terms of raising money to put into the Lansing Save accounts that every child gets when they get into, the kin when they get into kindergarten. So that's a, it's a great thing going on in Lansing. Additionally, our Office of Financial Empowerment team um, was the, the highlight of a great Citizens Academy evening um, last weekend. We heard great reviews. So for the city clerk, you're up this week, and uh, we know that you're going to knock it out of the park. City council's already gone, and the president and vice president, I understood, were a hit on behalf of city council. So, uh, so our Citizens Academy is rolling along, and they're, they're getting a great education. Um, this Friday, I hope everybody remembers, is our chili cook-off, um, where we will highlight many of the great chilies. Uh, send your bribes this way. Send your bribes this way and that way. Um, yeah, that's right, Jerry, you were, you were always there also. Um, I forgot about it. You guys both will be there. First place. So enjoy the chili. <laughs> I plan to, I'm not a judge. I'm just going to go and enjoy, but it's always a lot of fun. Never want to judge that. I hate to have be the judge for a chili cook-off. But Friday, um, I would start at 4 over at Adato, 4, uh, over at Adato Park. It's in the afternoon. You can look it up. Oh. Is it later? Or no, that's right. It's in the stadium this year. Yes. That's right. In it's in the stadium. stadium. I'm so used to Adato Park. It was a stadium last year also. Yeah. So, all right, the answer is Google it and you'll find it. But it's BWL Chili Cook-Off is coming up this Friday. I'm not as prepared. Um, and then Saturday is Oktoberfest in Old Town, so that'll be a blast. And then Sunday is the NAACP uh, Freedom Fund Dinner, which is at 4 p.m. at the, the Crown Plaza over on the west side. Um, so lots of fun things to do in Lansing, as always. Thank you. Any other ones that we missed. Okay. Okay. We are to public comment on legislative matters. And again, that includes all the resolutions listed on the consent agenda, resolutions for action, and the uh, ordinance for passage, and the following public hearing. Number one, consideration of an ordinance amending Chapter 1300 medical marijuana operations. Uh, thank you, Mr. Clerk. Um, this ordinance is um, Ordinance Chapter 1300, and the changes to this ordinance are that this will apply to all marijuana operations, including medical and recreational marijuana. 
Uh, it eliminates the Medical Marijuana Commission leaving the appeal process with the city clerk. It adds the following recreational license types, marijuana retailer, marijuana processor, marijuana um, micro business, and designated consumption establishment. The maximum number of locations for both medical marijuana provisioning centers and marijuana retailers is 28. Prior um, to this version, the maximum number was 25. The maximum number of uh, marijuana micro businesses is one per ward. That is a new type of license that grows, processes, and sells marijuana. The maximum number of designated consumption establishments is one per ward. The caps on the number of medical marijuana grow and marijuana grows at 75, but begins on January 1st, 2021. As licenses are denied or um, issued licenses are not renewed, the total number of locations will be reduced to 55. No medical marijuana provisioning center, uh, marijuana retailer, marijuana uh, micro business, or designated consumption establishment shall be permitted, uh, permitted the sale, consumption, or serving of alcohol. Regarding buffering changes, public playground equipment, or public, um, the buffering changes to public playground equipment, uh, which was three, is now just changed to public parks. It prohibits the consumption of marijuana in a public place except as provided by state law. And the option, the last is the option to appeal through the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, were eliminated and there are no variances permitted from the um, buffering use. We do have um, a letter from Elaine uh, Walmart, um, an email uh, with her objections to the ordinance that uh, she would like put into the record. Okay. Uh, we also received an email from the uh, Lansing Regional Chamber of Commerce recommending yes. adoption of the ordinance. Yes, I forgot that one. Thank you. Um, our first speaker is Robert Ovalle, followed by Dale Kopich. Uh, hello, everyone on the uh, City Council, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I just want to say I remember when I was 15 years old, I was put in jail. Uh, for just a small amount of marijuana. Uh, they wanted to try me as an adult. Uh, luckily, the judge that was hearing my case decided that I was just a child, so he said, well, we'll just send him to Camp Highfields. But uh, there is a couple things I want to say. Uh, they're concerning uh, the Red Cedar construction, the permit for 24 hours. Uh, a lot of people might remember uh, John Pollard. He used to come up here and say, beep, 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 beep. Uh, do you want to hear that all the time? I mean, ugh, come on now, be for real. Some people's got to sleep. And... Uh, I don't know. I this is gonna be my son's uh, 30th birthday uh, on the third. So, and I just lost my mom in uh, November of last year, and my dad in April of this year. So I haven't been up here and doing as much speaking as I should. But I'd like the people of Lansing to know what this means. That means power to the people. Uh, I always told my son, if you don't stand up for something, you're going to fall for anything. And have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Dale Kopich and then Loretta Stanaway.
Good to see you again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the branch has not made a uh, formal opinion or assessment on this particular topic. However, there's been a number of discussions uh, in the meetings and such uh, co and concerns that were raised on uh, liberties of the individuals who are not users of the product and the infringements on, on their privileges and rights in their homes, et cetera. Some of the things concerning uh, uh, the smell of, of, of the growth of this particular product, and then the other thing is, as all that been out, is really having a good understanding of what kind of health impairment there may be. Uh, we, we all talk about the good things that it can do, but um, has there really been any real deep research, real deep research on the topic? Labeling of the product, uh, I know being uh, the other day at uh, QD and seeing CBD oil being offered. Um, labeling of that product and making sure that it doesn't get in the hands of children uh, is a concern that a number of individuals have expressed. And then uh, getting back to one of the big points, if we're talking about the civil liberties of being in your house or, or being on your own, your own property, and uh, there's individuals that do need it, and we understand the deregulation of it and the good things that it's done for individuals who got huge sentences behind it. But uh, the other piece of that still falls on how it's going to be uh, monitored and, and uh, policed in a manner where it's not going to be a disturbance on uh, other individuals in the community. And so that's the things that we raise. We haven't, again, made a, a formal opinion or, or a statement on it. But uh, those things were expressed, and I thought, since I saw it on the topic, I just would pass that along to you. And I'm hoping that in your ordinance there will be some kind of a consideration of individuals uh, that are not in, in need of the uh, product that, you, that people will be pushing here soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Loretta Stanaway and then Linda Appling. Well, ideally, I would prefer that there not be any recreational marijuana, but since it's out there, I support the majority of the ordinance changes that you've outlined. Uh, I would uh, actually prefer that there not be social clubs or the uh, facilities in each ward, but I respect that you've limited it to one in each ward. So I thank you for that. Uh, on the issue of social equity, um, Ms. Dunbar made a point in the media recently that there would be preferential treatment as it stands now for an uh, East Lansing resident trying to establish a business here in, in Lansing. And uh, her point was supposed to be that that was uh, a wrong situation that was unfair to Lansing residents. I would flip that around and say that that's an excellent argument for not giving preferential treatment to anyone. You shouldn't be giving prefer preference to anybody. Uh, they should be standing on their own merits. So that's my view there on the noise ordinance. I understand that there um, was discussion about possibly issuing the license with the caveat that it only be used under certain circumstances. And my fear there is that it gives too much wiggle room and I can envision a situation where there would be an, uh, a time when it would come around that they would act first and come for approval second afterwards and it's a done deal and you're out of the loop. So I do not support that uh, option. On the budget priorities, again, you'll hear this repeatedly, police, fire, codes, roads, sidewalks. I heard quite a lot of stuff on the scanner this past weekend. Uh, there were numerous times on Friday and on Saturday and Sunday where LPD had no officers available city-wide, none. There were some big incidences that went on. There was one situation where a person had been chasing another down the street with a gun and eight gunshots had been fired, LPD could not respond. There was another situation where there were over 100 people fighting and there were guns out and LPD could not respond. This is not acceptable. And the only way it's gonna change is if you put the words into the budget that say we must stop funding fluff and put the priorities where they belong. They have to be on safety, police and fire first. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Linda Appling and then Jason Peek.
Uh, hello, my name is Linda Appling, and I reside in the city of Lansing. Uh, and I am here once again to request that the committee reject the marijuana ordinance. Legalization of marijuana does not require the growing and selling in the city. Two, allowing this will cost the city in terms of development. Already a pharmacy is next to Walgreens on homes in MLK. I expect as a result, Walgreens will move when their lease contract is up. Such situations will occur again and again. What will you do in the future to correct the situation? Have another brownfield where we give more tax abatements? Frankly, I'm tired of giving tax abatements. I also expect more people will be caught up in selling small amounts of marijuana. Pressure will be placed on the police department to arrest and prosecute them. And that will happen. I, I, you, you, you can see it already. The more that those people pay for their licenses, the less they're going to want any competition. Our children will experience the negative impact of having to smell and having their cognitive abilities impacted. Nothing in the current ordinance that you have allows for us to address that. The so-called, quote, social justice provision is nothing more than an attempt to build silos and separate communities. It should be rejected. If you truly wanted to assist people, you would set aside a specific number of licenses. You would establish a fund to pay for college tuition. You would assist their children in getting help needed to perform well in school. Thank you for your listening to me. I don't have anything else to say. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Jason Peak. Hello. Um, I wanted to thank the city council first for um, supporting the UAW during our strike and our times of difficulty. Um, also, I want to remind the city that uh, we're not the only labor union in the city fighting for fair contracts at this time, so it might be good to acknowledge their fights also. Yeah, um, I, I, I actually am up here to talk about the marijuana ordinance. Um, I have some questions and con some concerns about that. As chair of the Medical Marijuana Commission, I had, we had submitted some recommendations to the council. I believe they weren't ever addressed, and I, I don't know why that was. Um, it looks to this will, this, this will make some changes, so those changes that we recommended may not be necessary now, but um, I still feel that the cap for uh, provisioning centers and retailers is low. Um, I don't understand why we need to dictate how many uh, businesses and what kind need to be in each ward. I think that we should leave it up to the owners of these businesses to run their businesses as they see fit. Um, if you have a, uh, you know, if a micro, a micro business may be good for uh, more than you know, one location per award if the consumers and the customers and the citizens will allow that. I also think that we should have uh, preferential treatment for Lansing citizens that will uh, keep our tax dollars in our, in our city. And uh, for those that want to pay for more police and things, we need as much tax revenue as we can have to do that. And if we let it leave our city and go out elsewhere, then we'll lose that. Um, what else did I have? Um, let's see. And um, this, uh, the designated consumption establishment, I believe that's the clubs, right? That's the slang for club there, okay. Um, there was some other things that were stricken out of this. There was a provisions in here over um, the cleanliness of the facilities and the cleanliness of the people handling and the processing of it. Uh, it was it was struck out. Um, I'm not sure why that would be. I think it's important that we have clean and safe establishments. Uh, for the citizens. Um, I do want to recognize that uh, there was some steps taken to uh, tackle the odor. I know odor is one of the biggest concerns of our citizens here, so I do see that's in here, and I think uh, that's good. Um, uh, and then as far as the, the, uh, the grow facilities, um, I'm not sure why we want to lower the cap on that. Um, I think that we should let the market decide for itself what the city can handle. I realize that we don't need hundreds of places, um, but uh, you know, I'm, I think the 28 is low for that, and I think 55 would be low for the growth. If there are demands there, then we should have the product available. Um, 
because uh, people who want that will leave the city and that money will leave the city also. Um, so, uh, but again, I do, I do thank you for your continued support for the UAW. Um, so, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We are to the referral of the public hearings. Uh, we will be acting on that this evening. Then we are to the consent agenda. Vice President Spadafore. Uh, item one was take item one A and B were taken care of. Item two is being two A has been been pulled for consideration. Item two B is not going to be considered this evening. Is that correct, Councilmember Washington? Right. Um, and with no objection, we'll leave the budget priorities on consent agenda. I move the consent agenda, which is the budget priorities for 2020 2021. Okay. Did. Um we have the um, budget priorities, which would be available for the public to read online um, if, that, if that's a consensus of the council. Uh, we have that before us. All those in favor of moving the budget priorities say aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, passes. Okay, then we are to the Committee on General Services. Councilmember Washington. Um, what we have before us is the substitute uh, resolution regarding the noise ordinance for the Red Cedar uh, redevelopment. After listening to the public comment last week and listening to council members, um, I was able to reach out to the developer, Continental Ferguson Lansing LLC, and they were in turn able to quickly get with their contractors so that we could make um, some changes to this ordinance. This has been changed to this, to work 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Saturday and 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Sunday from October 1st through the end of November 30th, 2019. The 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. was actually a request made from a council member of the city of East Lansing. Additionally, um, the ordinance would allow work on weekdays, including holidays from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. and on Saturdays from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. beginning December 1st, 2019 for the duration of the project to permit timely completion of the overall project. Um, okay, and the last one is the one that was really um, a point of contention was the 24 hours, seven days a week. This has been changed to state that based on public comment, Continental Ferguson Lansing LLC modified the request with the understanding if need is demonstrated in the future, they can request to city council additional waivers. So they would have to come back before council to get any waivers um, that are not stated in this resolution. And with that, I would move the substitute resolution for the noise waiver. Um, we have the resolution in front of us. Uh, council Member Jackson. Thank you. I I'm gonna support the resolution and I'll speak on that just briefly, but I just wanted to bring up a few points that weren't mentioned. Um, basically from the public hearing and just the geography, we pretty much learned that it's East Lansing residents that's affected by um, the sound. It's the Cedar Village neighborhood to the south. It's the neighborhood next to, across the street from the construction near Frandor to the north and east. And then directly to the east, it's Michigan State, Brody Hall, and the Oak apartment people. And people from all those places came. Um, and then I just am reminded that you know, when it comes to being regional neighbors, I just reminded of the income tax that East Lansing passed a year or so back that ultimately cost the city of Lansing almost a million dollars annually. And everybody knew it, but it's passed. Um, but I do believe in being good regional neighbors and people should be able to sleep. Construction shouldn't necessarily happen all day, all night. Um, and there was a good compromise made, but um, just when we, there is still a benefit of finishing this project and getting revenue flowing into the city, which would be an interest of the city. Um, and, you know, we came to a compromise, but I just wanted to point that out. Are there uh, other comments? 
seeing none, um, I appreciate the fact that uh, the developers work to try to resolve this after listening um, to the comments, and I think that it meets the concerns that are needed. And again, as Councilmember Washington said, um, as they are moving through this process, if there's um, additional waivers that are needed, then they will come back to Council at that time. Having said that, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you. Uh, we are to the Committee on Ways and Means. Uh, uh, Council Member Spitzley. Thank you, Pratt. Thank you, Madam President. What we have before us is a grant acceptance and memorandum of agreement for the uh, EPA Brownfield Assessments Coalition grant and Lansing Regional Brownfields Coalition. Um, the fund amount is um, $600,000. $400,000 of it will be um, used for hazardous substances assessment and $200,000 will be used for petroleum assessment. This coalition, um, of which the city of Lansing is a fiduciary, is East Lansing, Ingham County, Eaton County, and Clinton County. Um, the application was um, submitted in uh, January of 19 and approved and awarded in June. Um, and basically what it does is it um, provides for phase one and phase two do care funding for um, brownfield sites. Um, uh, the, the grant, um, for example, the, the, there was a grant received by the city of Lansing in 2015 that um, initiated 42 assessments. Um, and so, and it was the same grant of about $500,000. So it is needed. It's needed to help those um, folks who are doing economic development in the city of Lansing to, to, to cover the hurdle of phase one and phase two assessments. Um, I, uh, the question, there was a question of whether or not there was a city match, um, and what we were told is each individual grantee um, has um, a part that they have to provide, and it ranges from um, 10 to 20%. Um, in 2015, when the, when the grant was, um, was given out, um, each individual grantee was required to pony up 10%. So with that, I will move the resolution to accept the grant. We have a motion on the grant. Are there any questions? Uh, the only question I would have, Councilmember Spitzley, is um, is this um, ones that would allow the developer to um, receive a grant from it, or is it a loan that they would pay back into the fund? It it. it Sorry. From what I understand, it is a grant. Um, um, so it, you know there were 42 assessments. Now what happens is that, um, for example, Leap or or Ingham County or you know they're working with people and, and that that business owner or person would um, um, discuss a need for phase one or phase two. And so this is just another tool in our toolbox of economic development. Okay. Um, they are required, again, to um, put forth some dollars, but it is it is a grant. It's a grant from EPA. OK, thank you. Are there any other questions? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you. OK, we are to ordinances for passage. We have an ordinance of the City of Lansing, Michigan to amend the Lansing Codified Ordinances by amending Chapter 1300, Sections 1 through 16 to add business licenses to address recreational marijuana and update the ordinance to reflect changes in laws and rules. It is read a second time by its title. The ordinance was reported from the Committee on Public Safety and is on the order of immediate passage. I would pass the gavel. Thank you. President Wood. Um, at this time, I would um, move the um, medical mar or the medical the marijuana ordinance. I don't think there's a need to go over all the points again. We just did that uh, for the public hearing. None of those have changed. So with that, at this time, I would move the adoption of the ordinance. It's been moved by President Wood. Are there is there discussion? Uh, Council Member Jackson. Thank Council you. Member I just want to take a few minutes, probably not longer than the public's granted of three minutes just to explain why I won't support the ordinance. Uh, and this is just 
my opinion and how I came across my rationale. First is um, the procedure. We, last year, around this time, there was strong indication that the recreational ballot initiative would pass. I believe I made a comment that we should proactively look as a city to see how it can best benefit the city of Lansing. Um, and that was it. Next thing we know this year, the administration sends us an ordinance to work on. It goes to public safety. Um, that's one of the places it could have gone. It could be intergovernmental relations as we work with Lara. It could be planning and development. And it could certainly be public safety. Uh, public safety did a great job. They worked really hard on it. Um, made some changes. And I was able to look through some of the minutes to see how some of the changes came because I was alerted last week when we moved for the amendment of the social equity amendment um, that even law gave us a, um, a recommendation or basically that it's not supported by the record and it would open us up to lawsuits. First, I'll point out that the last ordinance opened us up to lawsuits and we still roll with it. I would also point out that in the record here, some of the main provisions being the park definition changing to no equipment from three, being the 28 um, dispensary cap moving from 25 to 28, the 55 grows, all those would be arbitrary to the record. I saw that on the first public safety meeting, uh, President Wood recommended um, on July 30th that they change the definition of the park and it will be, it'll be decided and discussed at the next meeting. On August 6th, I noticed that it was taken out without any basically input, discussion, probably input, but no nothing on the record that I'm supposed to look at that shows why, what the rationale is for that, why 28 is better than 25 is better than 30, why 55 matters, why one per ward matters, um, what the problems are with no equipment versus equipment. Um, none of that was discussed because when we introduced, and I say we, but Kathy Dunbar introduced the social equity piece, it was told that there's nothing in the record to support it. Um, and I would just say that same thing happened here. I looked at who came to all the meetings, there's four or five of them, and other than City of Lansing officials, there was Mary Ellen Perficato from Fairfield Condo, Mary Reynolds, who we all know very well, Elaine Wombo, who we know, um, Jan Fleck and Charles Fleck, Jenning Lane, and Linda Appling. Those are the people who came to at least one of the five or so designated times to speak about it. And then we get, so it passes out of public safety um, after a lot of hard work, and then it comes to the floor for a full conversation. And at the floor, um, when things are basically introduced, I really feel like, you know, it's been done and stamped between the mayor uh, working with President Wood and, and those recommendations that got suggested and agreed upon, I feel like the whole um, council didn't really have um, that conversation and debate, and we have the public hearing today. I know for timing purposes, we have to have the hearing and pass it, but let's face it, it's already decided, and it was decided. Um, <clears throat> I also will vote against it because the lack of the social equity piece, so I was, we were told that it might open us up to lawsuits because there's nothing on the record, just like everything else, but also when the state of Michigan can pass a very similar social equity piece in its state law, that should be some compelling, um, I mean that should be some indication that it's not that far-fetched. As far as Lansing residents who may, you know, want to get in on this and have one of those limited spaces and getting a preference, I guess my question for the, the crime and safety and order folks, um, is what do you think the people from Lansing who have established grows or business aspirations are going to do when they don't make it? I think that could in itself add to more black market activity that we're all trying to be away from. And lastly, with the social equity piece, 
the three things that's asked for, I don't think is, is unreasonable at all to give local residents some preference, to give people convicted of marijuana crimes in the past some preference, and to give people who've been in the industry, like caregivers, some preference. Um, it might help some people, but it won't hurt anybody. And I don't think there's a big, a big um, fear or problem with adding that, especially when we talk about compromising. So for those reasons, I'm not gonna support it. Thank you, Councilmember Jackson. Councilmember Hussein? I'll, I'll be incredibly brief. Um, as somebody that, that took part in the 18th month process back in 2016 and in 2017, um, and, and then obviously somebody that uh, as a public safety committee member also took place or part in this, uh, this process uh, in terms of committee review, um, discussion, vetting, um, and eventual um, uh, adoption. Um, I, I just want to I just want to discuss my public safety committee uh, colleagues, and I want to I want to say thank you. Uh, the process was not nearly as long uh, as when we went uh, through the original chapter 1300, um, but but each and every time uh, these individuals were present, they were prepared. Um, most people don't know that we met every single week outside of our normally scheduled public safety meetings, um, and and that was in addition to our normally scheduled public safety meetings. Um, and and so I really appreciated uh, the fact that um, my my colleagues on public safety, being Patricia Spitzley and Carol Wood. Um, came each and every time uh, prepared, um, and they asked fantastic questions. I think what we did was we took um, uh, basically a suggested ordinance um, from the mayor, uh, and uh, you know obviously we have this this check and balance that is baked into our city charter. I think we took uh, the charge seriously, and I think what we um, did was we came up with a better um, ordinance. I want to thank the uh, city attorney's office, um, uh, Amanda O'Boyle and Lisa Hagen and uh, Heather Sumner, and, and obviously our city attorney Jim Samerica. They were fantastic. Uh, as our, our guide on the side. Um, and they, they made navigating the process um, easy and, and simple, and, and so I really appreciate uh, those individuals as well. Um, I am not completely happy with everything in this ordinance. To be quite frank, there are uh, some license types that I was hoping we would not see uh, in our final ordinance, uh, but this is the process of compromise and negotiation and, and listening to the public uh, and trying to balance uh, all the different interests at the table. Um, and I think what we have is um, an ordinance that uh, establish a sound, sound regulatory framework moving forward. Understand that uh, ordinances are, are living, breathing documents. They can be opened up, they can be amended. Um, Councilman Spadafore often says that it's hard to put the toothpaste back in the tube, and that is true. Uh, the city has lived through, um, you know, obviously with the adoption of the Met Michigan Medical Marijuana Act in 2008, uh, we lived through some, some pretty difficult times when, when we talk about the marijuana industry here in the city of Lansing. Um, it was often dubbed kind of the Wild West. Uh, and we lived through uh, appellate court decisions and Supreme Court decisions and attorney general opinions and moratoriums and ordinances uh, that were unenforceable and, uh, and, the, and the list goes on. Uh, and it was very difficult when we tried to get um, kind of a check um, on what had been allowed to proliferate in the community. Um, but, but again, I think what this does uh, is ensure that we move forward with strong regulatory framework. Um, if we have to right size this document to, to better fit our community at some point, we certainly have that ability. Um, but I, am, I just wanted to state that I am happy um, as is, although just like everybody at this table, we've compromised and there are some things obviously um, that, I, that I was hoping I would not see in this final document. So with that being said, um, again, thank you to our public safety uh, committee colleagues uh, and to this body. Council Member Dunbar. Thank you very much. Um, there are a couple things that I would like to address. Um, one, um, I don't normally say thank you to the LSJ, but thank you for running that article, for clearing up the race issue. Um, I was surprised to find out that there was a community meeting um, last week where the proposal that I had introduced had been twisted to be represented as um, somehow giving preference specifically to um, folks based on race. Um, that was never my intention. That was, that was something that was spoken up here, not by myself. Um, and I want to make that very clear. The social equity issue is about residency. First and foremost, it is about residency. It's about people who live in Lansing, who want to get into this business, um, having a shot, uh, 
at a, and it's specific to uh, two types of licensing, the micro businesses and the social clubs. Having a shot um, at an industry that is right now controlled by a lot of larger corporations, which we knew when we passed this, um, originally the medical marijuana one, was going to be a risk and we heard outcry from the public that there was a lack of consideration for local residents having a shot at these businesses. And we were under the gun then in order to pass something so that we uh, had something in place when the state started licensing. So we're, in, we're under the gun for two different reasons. Last time was we had to have something voted on or we wouldn't get anything. Now we have to have something voted on or we get everything. Right, so that's the way it is. If we don't pass this by this time, we don't we don't opt in. We're automatic under those conditions that are that are done under this ordinance. We're automatically opted into everything. So that's why this this time frame is so important here. Um, but to be clear, social equity was designed, and I realize I, I said this before, for folks who live in the community to have a shot at this. And I, I, I've already stated um, it's not about race, um, but there are folks in the community who have been disproportionately affected by overzealous marijuana enforcement. And, um, and I guess if somebody wanted to make the claim that that's a racial issue, that's, that's their claim. Um, the issue is that there are folks who can't get jobs that's not really disputed. I, I don't think anybody can say that the box doesn't exist, the box exists. The licensing process up until now prevented anybody from getting into the business if they've had a conviction. And we have an opportunity with these two very specific licensing um, classifications, which is the micros and the social clubs to reverse that trend and let local folks have a shot at this. Um, I did hear last week there was comment that there was ample time and opportunity for folks to participate in this process and I would challenge that. Um, we as council members who are not even on the committee uh, didn't see this draft until it came out two weeks ago. And there was no, from what I can tell, and, and thank you for sharing those minutes and the lack of, I guess, provenance to go into the rationale for reasoning behind some of the changes that were made. Um, I don't think that there was any request to have folks um, join that meeting outside of, and I can be corrected if I'm wrong, um, but to ask folks who have been uh, outside of the committee or outside of the, the tight social group that has been involved in crafting this uh, to comment on it. And I would, I know it's gonna pass tonight and I'm, I'm not going to support it, um, but I do hope that, that at some point we get past the fear of lawsuits um, because in, in that regard, um, one per ward, I think we're gonna get sued on that. I'm, I'm just gonna say this. By limiting in certain areas and not in others, allowing opportunity in certain areas and not in others, and changing the zoning in such a way that we've minimized the amount of space that can be used for these by expanding the, the, the circle around parks, we have not only encompassed seven of the 12, or the 20 that have already been approved, that they would now be in disapproved locations, but we've also limited where's their real estate available that can be purchased to do these things. What if there is a, a no real estate available? It's all bit dependent on the market. We don't, as a city, provide them with a space to do this. They've got to find a building that's available to lease or buy to do this, and if it's not available, there could be wards that don't have one, even that there could be like three opportunities available in one ward alone, but we are, we are artificially influencing the market in a way that I think that also subjects us to lawsuit more so than it would be if we were to give preference to Lansing residents. So there you go. Thank you, Councilmember Dunbar. Councilmember Spitzley. Thank you, Madam President. Um, 
No. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Vice President. <laughs> Sorry about that. <clears throat> the voice gets low, but not yeah. quite that low. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> um, so I'll be voting yes on this ordinance. And, you know, I knew that this was going to be very important. And so, to, you know, I wanted to make sure that my thoughts were clear um, and kind of reflected. Um, so, I, I, so I wrote things down. So bear with me. So I will be voting yes on the ordinance as presented. And, and I do believe that it's the best compromise between the administration and the council. But more importantly, it's protective of our neighborhoods and provides a fair, predictable regulatory structure for the licensing of medical and recre recreational marijuana businesses within our city. And, and I am particularly excited about the four micro businesses that are um, included as part of this regulatory structure. Uh, you know, I believe that these are great opportunities for a small business and for a small business person to be introduced um, in this, to this new industry. And so. Um, much has been reported about the council's position on social equity language in the proposed ordinance. Um, let, me, let me also share some of the timelines. When the council received the draft language from the administration, it was referred to Public Safety Committee, and we knew we were up against um, a November deadline to adopt a fair, predictable regulatory structure. Um, this timeline necessitated necessitated that we approve the ordinance by September 30th because as a zoning ordinance it needs a 30-day layover before it becomes. So the Public Safety Committee, as Council Member said, Hussein said, met every week from the end of July to the end of August. All these meetings were published. All these meetings were open to the public. At no time did anyone from the public or Council present any social equity language for consideration. Had that happened, the proposal would have been properly vetted by the city attorney's office and members of the committee. I, I when the original um, ordinance was being discussed, I was not a member of public safety, but I came to almost every public safety committee. I didn't, I didn't need an invitation because I was a council member and I wanted to be a part of it and I wanted to contribute. And so I did that. I don't know about being a social club here up on council, I consider that just being a good council member. If the ordinance was important to me, I was gonna be there to make comment. So, you know, those type of comments, the social club thing, whatever. I've been consistent in my position that items or language brought before the council on any issue at the last minute will get a no vote from me unless it's a compelling reason for the late item. I've been absolutely consistent with that. The social equity language and discussion could have easily been incorporated into the process I just mentioned. That did not happen. Second and most importantly, the issue of social equity is too significant of an issue to be determined in a vacuum in two weeks within one industry and without the input of many groups, individuals, and organizations who have a vital interest in this important issue. I have worked tirelessly on issues of social justice and social equity for most of my adult life and in my profession, and I will continue to facilitate meaningful discussion and policy recommendations when they are vetted and appropriate, and appropriate to city business. You know, there was also discussion about the minutes. Um, you know, our minutes for our committees are, our minutes to our committees are snapshots. In, 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 they are snapshots in review. They're not comprehensive. They are not. Um, there were more people um, at the meetings. Um, I, I, I know that Robin Schneider came at one point, and she, you know, she was there and, and, were, and was part of the discussion. I'm sorry, what? Did you say something? Oh, I said, didn't she recommend the social equity? Um, not no. at that meeting. She did not. Um, she did not, absolutely did not. She recommended something else. Um, as far as the parks issue, you know, I, I met with the city attorneys on a Friday and we went through overlay maps and we looked at parks and we looked at um, setbacks to determine exactly and to make sure that there were still options and, and sites available for review. I think as a council person, if you have a concern about setbacks, you know, that information is open to you. The city attorney is available to you. The maps were available to you. Lastly, the city attorney has been clear about his concerns about including social equity component presented without the type of citizen input I've talked about. We spent a lot of resources, both money and time, successfully defending the current ordinance, and we need to heed his advice in this instance. 
So developing a social equity component for the four micro businesses scoring criteria is, is important to me and I think that we should, be, we should do it. I've spoken both with the mayor and the city clerk and they feel that that's also a worthy endeavor to work through the scoring system to um, do social equity and, and I think that's fine. The council can work with the city clerk, administration, and the city attorney to incorporate criteria in the scoring that includes criteria that recognizes social equity, that recognizes a social equity component. By doing this, we ensure that whatever criteria that's developed actually benefits the population that is disproportionately impacted. And that was my issue all along, is when you're putting together a social equity component, you wanna make sure that the population that's disproportionately impacted is actually being served with the, with the language. Um, so I absolutely support the process and hope it can be implemented. And I apologize for the, the, for the length of my statement, no, no. but um, that's my statement and thank you. Thank you, Vice President, Sp Vice President Spadafore. I'm going to be very brief. We have been discussing this marijuana ordinance for absolutely years and years. <laughs> When I was that chair of public safety, which has been many years, we were discussing marijuana. We could argue the minutia of marijuana until doomsday. We've got to get something passed. We've got to get something on the books. This constant bickering over every little piece is not doing us well in this city at all. This does not mean by any stretch of the imagination that we cannot go back and tweak this ordinance. But if we're gonna pick apart every little part, every time this issue comes up, we will never get anything passed. I would encourage all of my council colleagues to be professional in this process and to understand that it's okay for us to have differing opinions. And for the media, I know you all tweak it any way you wanna tweak it. I am not against marijuana. I am not against social equity. I am not against any of it. But what I am against is beleaguering this every single week. Let's get it on the books and let's see what we need to tweak it. Thank you. Councilmember Dunbar, then Councilmember Wood, President Wood. Thank you. If it is okay for us to leave social equity scoring to the clerk, that's fine. I think it's important for us to have it in the ordinance that we state that it's important for us to have social equity. But the legal argument still doesn't work for me. If we let the clerk come up with scoring mechanisms that prefer residents, which I want, which I am asking for, how is it not gonna get challenged if he does it versus we do it? That's my issue. I don't understand what talk about passing the buck. Like, if it gets done, I'm gonna be thrilled that it gets done, and I hope that we do give preference to local residents. Um, this is not an all-out social equity uh, platform for curing all of the ills everywhere in the city that have to do with disparaging outcomes of vulnerable populations. This is specific to this marijuana ordinance. Uh, so, again, I'm voting no and I hope the clerk does institute the policy. Thank you, and finally, Council Member President Wood. Uh, thank you, uh, Vice President Spadafore. I want to address a few of the issues that have been talked about here this evening. Uh, first of all, when we were given the ordinance from the mayor, every council member had that in their book, this blue book that's in front of you. And those of you that do it online, it was online. Um, at that time, when it was referred to the Public Safety Committee, we also made it clear that we were going to be meeting every Tuesday um, for the rest of the summer on that ordinance, specifically on the marijuana ordinance. And um, those minutes and the drafts were available both from Sherry as well as on the clerk's website when those uh, packets are uh, approved for the public to read as well as uh, for council members to take a look at. So those were available. Um, from 
here, sitting here, I also made the announcement at the council meeting what the schedule was going to be so that anyone who had a concern or was in the industry could come and be part of it. We actually made provisions to be out here in the, on, uh, the chambers, assuming that the same type of response that we had when we did the medical marijuana ordinance would we would have for the marijuana ordinance. That did not happen. People did not come. Um, as Council Member Spitzley said, our minutes are not a verbatim for every discussion that um, happens in a committee. We did talk about and, um, and went over some length about the playground equipment and why we were making changes uh, to that. Um, also, this went before the planning board and was part of the record of the planning board, which was uh, vetted through them where they had a copy of it, they reviewed it, they passed it um, as well. Lastly, um, this is a regulatory licensing um, ordinance that we are doing. Uh, whether we are talking marijuana or whether we are talking record, uh, a, a wrecker company or a trash hauling company, they are all regulatory licenses. None of the other of our regulatory licenses make any preferences for uh, Lansing residents. Um, and so um, I think this committee, and I want to th thank them, we worked very hard on trying to listen to what was out there. If you all remember when we uh, came up with the fact that we were going to have to pass this uh, sooner than what we thought, uh, I did a memo that went out to all council members, and I also addressed it at Committee of a Whole and said to you, this is the timeline and why it is the timeline. Other than the committee, which was working on it, no other council member came to me and said, because of this timeline, I have some ideas I'd like to do X, Y, or Z. So it isn't as if that information was not made available to you. I agree that, you know, um, when we started this, we had thought we'd have until the middle of October. That's not what ended up happening. Um, it is now the ninth hour. This is something that has to be passed. And again, um, not to keep uh, quoting uh, Vice President Spadafore, but <laughs> you know, it is better to to be able to go back and revise this if we need to to add to versus trying to take away from. So with that, I've moved the resolution, Motion. the ordinance. Yep. The ordinance has been moved. Mr. Clerk, would you please call the roll? On passage of the ordinance, Council Member Dunbar. Council Member Garza. Yes. Council Member Hussein. Yes. Council Member Jackson. Yes. Council Member Spadafore. Yes. Council Member Spitzley. Yes. Council Member Washington. Yes. Council Member Wood. Yes. Six yeas, two nays, the ordinance is adopted. Thank and again, you. this does not get immediate effect. It will be 30 days. So, okay, we and take the gavel back. We Thank are you. to speaker registration for public comment on city government related matters. That's the yellow sheet in the back. If you uh, want to sign up to speak, please make your way back there as it will be picked up in just a couple of seconds. And in the meantime, we are to reports of city officers, boards, and commissions. All right, Vice President Spadafore. And President, I move that all items be considered as being read in full and the proper referrals be made by you. Uh, we have a motion before us. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you. We have letters from the mayor regarding sole source purchase, economic development and planning department for info traffic parking solution. Uh, Ways and means and internal auditor. Sole source purchase Lansing Police Department for all city management services. 
Uh, Ways and Means and Internal Auditor. Uh, sole Source Purchase Finance Department for Zasky Accounting LLC. Uh, Ways and Means and Internal Auditor. And before you go um, further, I must say to the Ways and Means Committee, uh, just simply because of some of the things that we've been discussing, uh, dealing with integration of systems, um, I would hope that some of those are the questions that would be included in your inquiry into these sole sources. Thank you. Um, we have the appointment of Lori Strauss Baumer, Baumer as a member of the Michigan Avenue Corridor Improvement Authority. Uh, Development and Planning Committee. Grant Acceptance Automobile Theft Prevention Authority Grant from Michigan State Police. Ways and Means and Internal Auditor. And Grant Acceptance Office of I think that should say Highway Safety Planning Grant. I think grant. so, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, ways and Means and Internal Auditor. And Communications and Petitions, and those from the Liquor Control Commission regarding transfer of ownership uh, at 5016 South Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. Uh, General Services Committee. And we are two remarks by council members. Are there any remarks by council members? Seeing none. Remarks Mr. by the mayor. Mr. Mayor. I, I just want to clear up one thing that was mentioned in public comment um, uh, regarding the, the police and the police scanner that, um, that was referenced. So I asked the chief about that because when I hear there's a fight with 100 people somewhere in the city and I didn't know about it, that surprised me. Apparently, um, that was reported on the scanner, but was um, a false alarm. Um, so there was no high fight with 100 people. Um, we did have our police out with many one and two priority calls. We use mutual aid as do we give mutual aid as necessary, but our officers responded to every one of our dispatched calls. And um, while there were parties around town on a Saturday night, um, and there was one bigger incident, um, there was no there was, it was reported, so I will agree with that. It was reported, but it was um, found to be inaccurate. There was no mass fight that none of us knew about. So just wanted to make sure that the public knows that our officers are doing great, and um, figured I'd clear that up. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we are to public comment on city government related matters. Y you, yes, there was a yellow sheet. I saw it. <laughs> and I put it away? Yes, you did. <laughs> uh, must be a Monday. Robert Ovae followed by Cynthia Ward. Hello again. Uh, let me start by just saying that uh, I got a, back in 1970, or 1970, uh, two years ago. Uh, Mayor Verge Benero uh, gave me a plaque for having taken care of a rain garden and for 10 years. And uh, one of the people that I forgot to mention that's been helping me for uh, 17 years was Carol Cobb. She's sitting right there. Wow. Uh, she should have an award uh, just for carrying me around. Uh, but uh, my my son, uh, he was uh, schizophrenic and bipolar, and uh, the only thing that he told me that made him feel normal was smoking the joint. So uh, I would I would get I would have that for him in the morning, and uh, also I would like to say. Uh, Congratulations to the new police chief. Uh, uh, I knew Mike. I call him Mike because I could. Uh, everybody else had to call him Chief uh, Jankowski. But uh, he did a good job. He made a lot of improvements uh, with the police force. Uh, and there was a couple things that I forgot now that I was going to talk about. But uh, whatever happened to Lansing Inc., I went, I called them and I went down there and uh, 
there was a lady there named Mindy Billadu, and uh, she ran Silver Bells in the city, and uh, they told me there was one woman that was sitting there, and she was trying to work all these phones, and she was taking uh, four people's jobs at one time, and I asked her if they were going to have the rain garden, and she said, well, that's been referred to uh, the city of Lansing. They're going to take care of it with uh, uh, interns. Well, I went down to my rain garden, and there was a bunch of papers and stuff in there, and I cleaned it out and cleaned out uh, another one. And uh, I was thinking, wow, if I went to the city council and told them I cleaned up this mess, I wonder if they would give me like a couple thousand dollars, you know, since you guys want to charge everybody else a thousand dollars to clean up their uh, mess. And, and then I said, no, nah, I better not do that. But uh, I just was wondering what's, what's going on. Anyway, have a good night. Thank you. Uh, next is Cynthia Ward, Judge Ward, followed by Loretta Stanaway. Good evening, City Council. I'm Cynthia Ward, District Court Judge. Um, I'm here to give you informal notice, and I apologize that I didn't do it sooner, and I understand that there is a formal process that has to be followed. Um, but because of, of a media inquiry that I received last week, I wanted to give you notice that our court has submitted a proposal for a domestic violence grant with the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services. Mm -hmm. I did speak very briefly with Jody, um, excuse me, Councilmember Washington a few months ago, so she um, certainly did have prior notice, but I did not have an opportunity to speak to each of you, nor have I had an opportunity to follow the, um, the official process. I know it has to go through a committee of the of council, and we will follow that. Um, but because of the media inquiry and my concern that it may come out in the newspaper, I just wanted to make sure that you were aware that the, co the court does have a pending proposal before the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services. It seems to be moving forward. They contacted us and asked us to submit a proposal for a pilot project. And I wrote the proposal. It's going to address domestic violence seconds, which is a misdemeanor and it will allow for us to have a dedicated probation officer so that we can give proper oversight to persons on probation and we'll have um, additional judicial oversight by me. I will serve as the judge of the, of the domestic violence court. And it's also designed to enhance victim and survivor safety. So I did have an opportunity to review the hearing that I guess happened maybe four or five years ago where city council comprised of different members um, some, some different members rejected a grant from, I'm not sure the source, um, but I hope that this grant will be received favorably by city council. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, and next is Loretta Stanaway and then Mary Mullins. Well, just briefly, um, last time I checked, Friendship Manor and Skyview which would be impacted by the uh, Ferguson project, are Lansing properties and have Lansing residents. And um, as a follow-up to the mayor's comments, I was not aware that that was a debut, if you will. But I do know that uh, there was a call just yesterday that needed CSI and they were not available. And I do know that for several hours overnight, at least one time on the weekend, LPD was in call saturation status. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, and our final speaker is Mary Mullins. Careful. <laughs> um, my name is Mary Mullins, and I am union steward for ATU Local 1778. We at TransDev take care of the disabled in, around, in and around Lansing. We cater to over 7,000 clients, which equal about 7% of the voting uh, demographics. Our meeting last month that I came into, I started a survey afterwards and asked the TransDev employees how many were using federal assisted programs 
which came back to us as 50% or more of our employees receive government aid and to maintain daily life. Transdev employees should not be on any type of state subsidies. CATA uses federal and millage money to operate, which pays Transdev. City Council appoints four people to the CATA board, from my understanding, to represent workers and riders. We are asking that they stand up in Lansing and demand that Transdev take care of the workers the same way that they are sending millions of dollars, we are sending millions of dollars overall across the nation back to France, Dev, back to Fran France, which is Transdev, for decent wages and benefits. We need your help. We need your help in taking CATA and Transdev together in negotiations for decent wages, benefits, for the people that work there. There is absolutely no reason why anybody working in this city doing what we do should be on any form of state assistance. It's time to stop it. We need help to get a reasonable contract that people in here can support this city instead of taking away from it. In closing, I would like to say that we want to create a healthy environment as well. We work hard at what we do, and winter is coming on us, and it makes it really hard for having people using these jobs as pass-through. We need constant senior, seasoned employees to be able to do the work to make sure that these people get to where they need to be and do it safely. You're not going to do that unless they are paid decently and have decent medical benefits to do that. And that's what I'm asking you to do. Help us. And I thank you. Thank I'd like you. to let the UAW know we support you also. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, with that, I just want to remind the public that on October um, 7th, which is a committee of a whole. We will be having it here in the chamber and the Board of Water and Light will be here at that time. Um, October uh, 14th will be our next council meeting. And so uh, we will be having, of course, a uh, committee of a whole before that. We are scheduled to have uh, LEAP back on the 14th uh, to go over the rest of their presentation that they had at that time. So with that, we are adjourned.